So you want to do some astrophotography? Step into the ring this Samyang 14mm 2.8. Hi and welcome back to the channel, great to see you. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Just give the button a, a little nudge. Give me a like, give me a dislike, it's all good. So, the Sam Yang 14 millimeter. A couple of years ago, I wanted to do some astrophotography and I was completely lost in the world of astrophotography lenses. So, it was my mission then to go and discover what lenses were actually gonna be useful for me at that precise time. One of the lenses that I actually came across was the Samyang 14 mm 2.8. So, I've had the lens now for about a year and a half. What do I think of it? I think it's quite a good lens and I think it really does fill the gap for astrophotography on a little bit of a budget, although the images are far from budget. So the weight of the lens is 552 grams. That's a pounding weight, quite a robust build. It feels solid, there's no plastic kind of feeling to it. It feels very, very well built. So it comes with an inbuilt hood. And as I take the hood off now, you'll see the actual lens, um, which is quite bulbous. This is quite normal for the wide angle lenses. And it's very, very nice. It's a huge, huge lens when you look at it. So the biggest thing with this lens is the fact that it's manual focus. You will have to change the aperture and the focus all manually. Now, for me that doesn't really matter because I'll be looking for manual focus because I will zoom in to the nearest star, focus the lens manually to ensure that I get pinpoint focus on that star and then I'll start taking my photos. It doesn't come with any contact plates for your camera. So for me with the Canon, I know that it can't communicate with my camera. I know with other cameras that it can communicate. The focus ring itself is very smooth. Um, it's got a slight resistance about it, but it doesn't feel like it, it grinds on its gears. It's quite nice, comes to a stop quite, quite nicely. The aperture ring itself then, the mechanism seems to be quite plasticky and a little bit on the clunky side, but it does the job. So with the aperture range going from f22 all the way down to 2.8, it's got a really good range. Now, I have to confess though that I've never actually used this lens for daytime photography. It has always been my astrophotography lens. So I'm not going to scrutinize the, the lens in depth really, to be honest. I will tell you that there is some barrel distortion and there is some vignetting. All these things can be corrected. The barrel distortion has never really bothered me and the vignetting is easily corrected in Lightroom or whatever photo editing program you may be using. So what I will say, when I take astrophotography panoramas with this lens, I tend to leave quite a big gap in between the overlays. So I will overlay between 30 and 50% of the image as I go along. And I'm basically trying to rule out any problems with distortion. And I've had some really good photos though with this lens, really good photos. So. Although it can be deemed as a negative, it's really not. It's, it's just part of the, the way the lens is, to be honest. So I found this lens on the E-Infinity store online. And at the moment, at this present day, it's coming in at £239 for the Canon mount. It is available for other mounts. Um, and I think it's just a couple of quid either way of that. Now that isn't a lot of money in the world of lenses, but can be a lot of money to a lot of people. I'm not affiliated with them at all. I don't get any kickbacks, but 239 quid. Wow. I will show you some photos that I've taken with it and some time lapses just at the end. It's a very, very good lens for the money. So one of the negatives for you, if you're gonna use this for landscape photography, is that you're gonna to have to buy a separate filter holder. That lens is quite bulbous and you're gonna need something to get by there, to be honest. And it's going to be around about the £30 mark for you to get some kind of filter holder for this lens. So at the moment we're still under lockdown in Wales. This is Thursday night. It may change by the weekend. And whilst we're under lockdown, trying to do some astrophotography in the back garden, what I have noticed is that there's a tendency 
to get lens flare across my images. And I think you have to be very careful looking at images. It is definitely a consideration whenever you take astrophotography with this lens. So you may have to alter your angle, your composition, just to try and avoid some potential lens flaring. So another point with the lens is the fact that infinity will not get you focus. So what I mean is that when you actually come to focus your stars, a lot of people will say, go to, go to infinity and then you should, be, you should be spot on. You won't be. Make sure you flick your camera into live view, locate a bright star, magnify into it, and try to focus from there. Because what you will find, and what I found with my lens, unless there are specifically different scenarios where different lenses are behaving differently, if I take my Samyang lens straight to infinity, it will be out of focus. I have to pull it back and then I'll achieve bang on focus. So moving on to the positives. Well, I think the price has just got to be the number one positive of this. 239 quid for a lens that's gonna give you great images, great images. You will see that there is some barrel distortion. There will be some vignetting there will be a little bit of coma. You will see some aberrations, but this lens for the money is a light bucket. It will get you images of the Milky Way that are really, really good. And a lot of people are using this lens. And there is a reason why a lot of people are using this lens, because it's damn good. The sharpness of this lens is great. You may see some softness in the corners at 2.8, but for me, I usually vignette my images, so I'll close them in slightly anyway. Now for me, this was my first astrophotography lens, and I was absolutely astounded by the images that I was able to get with it. And I know that you will too. I thoroughly recommend this lens for astrophotography. It won't fail you. You could spend a lot more, a lot more money, and get a very, very similar image. So that's the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. So please subscribe to the channel. I know you don't want to miss any of my misadventures in photography. I'm not going very far, I promise. Just out the door, probably. Six foot that way behind you. Thank you very, very much for watching. And I will see you next Saturday. Next Saturday, at nine o'clock, nine o'clock next Saturday. And I'm gonna be reviewing the newer battery grip. Take care, have a great week. So as I speak to you now and a car alarm is actually blaring outside, hopefully you can't hear it. Just waiting for the car alarm. So that's the end of the video guys. I hope you can't hear that damn car alarm in the background because it's getting right on my pip now and it's taking me right off my stride. Thank you. End of the video guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video. It's just a little sample. This car alarm is getting on my 
Getting nerves now. Has it stopped? It's taking a fucking piss now. <laughs>